What's going on, baseball fans? How you doing? Who's ready to talk some playoff baseball? Let's get to it. What's going on, baseball fans? How are we doing? Hello, hello. 130 people to start things off. It looks like you guys are ready for some playoff baseball. What is going on, everyone? Hope everyone had a good start to the week. Uh, I, I got to say, I'm pretty excited. I got to say, the Red Sox, no playoff baseball for them in uh, you know a, a few years now. You know, So it's, it feels nice. While it's only... Oh, are we good? Are we good? Uh-oh. Everyone, we are still here. We are still here. Hello, hello. Okay, there we go. We're back on, everyone. Sorry about that. A little bit of lag. I think we're all good. Everything is good on my end. All righty. Let's start things off here. Uh, again, hope everyone's having a good week. Uh, I got to say, I'm pretty excited for the playoffs. A lot of good teams. And hey, you know, it, it's, it just feels nice to have my Red Sox in the playoffs again. Even if they end up losing, a lot of people didn't think my Red Sox could make it to this point. A lot of surprise teams this year, uh, a lot of non-surprises as well. Uh, so we're going to break down all of the teams tonight. And in the end, I'm going to go over my predictions for who I think is going to win the whole thing. I'm probably going to be wrong on everything uh, because... Hey, I'm not good at predictions. What can I say? But predictions are fun. And you know what? I, I put everything, every bit of my potato brain into my predictions uh, to come up with who I think is going to win the World Series this year. And again, I'm probably going to be wrong. So take it with a grain of salt. Uh, but I would love to hear all of your predictions as well. Um, after this stream is over, post them in the comments. I would love to read them. So um, and don't just put your predictions. Tell me why you think uh, uh, whatever team is going to win the whole thing. I would love to know why. Uh, but already, everyone, uh, I have a couple of cheap plugs that I got to do. I actually have an announcement, a pretty fun announcement, I have to say. It's a, it's a first-time thing on this channel. Also, we just hit 14,000 subscribers last night. I want to thank you all for, I mean, everyone, all the new subscribers that have been coming in lately. Uh, hey, pretty cool to hit a nice little milestone right there. Let's get to 15,000 before uh, the playoffs is over. But I have a couple of cheap plugs, if I may. Uh, if there is anyone new, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button for me, hit the bell button, share the stream if you can. Also, we have memberships on the channel now. If you see my home page, we have a join button and that will lead you to a couple of different tiers. We have the all-star tier for 99 cents a month. You get badges and emojis for the streams and the videos, you get members only polls as well. If you go to the MVP tier, $2.99 a month, you get all the perks that you have with All Star, you get access to a private Discord and members only streams. So uh, definitely think about it down below. But also, everyone, I have an announcement for the channel. For the first time, we have a partner. We are partnered. With Dr. Squatch, I got I got a discount code for you guys. I gotta say, uh, if I if if I can say one thing, if I can say one thing, any sort of you know affiliates or sponsors that I'm gonna have for this channel, I'm gonna make sure they're they're companies that I actually like and companies that I actually 
uh, hey, have bought things from in the past. And you know what? I'm actually going to prove to you that I have purchased Dr. Squatch products before. If you're not familiar with Dr. Squatch, hey, they make a whole bunch of soap and it's absolutely fantastic. So take a look here. I've been a customer of Dr. Squatch going all the way back to last year. I spent over $100 on my first order. Fantastic soap. I'm going to tell you this right now. Look at all the orders that I've done over the past year. I love this company. Uh, their soaps, they make me feel wonderful. They make me feel clean. They make me smell rather decent, I must say. Uh, I, I gotta say, I really like their products a lot. They make deodorants. They make colognes. Uh, hey, they got a lot of good products here. So if you go to the description down below, there's a coupon code uh, for 10% off your first order. So if you're interested, uh, hey, I, 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 I'm not sure what kind of soaps you guys like, but they have a whole bunch of scents on here as well. Um, so, uh, Hey, pretty cool to have a, a, an affiliate with the channel now. So, alrighty, everyone, uh, we're gonna get to the uh, playoff preview here. I'm gonna go over each team first, and then we're gonna go to the predictions at the end. So, stay tuned for the end. I'm gonna go over each team. Uh, gonna give my thoughts on kind of what I'm thinking with you know each of these teams. How are they stacking up here in the playoffs? Um, and then again, I'll do my predictions at the end. So we're right at around 150 people. Uh, so. Let's get to it. Here we go. So here is the bracket as it is as of right now. Let me actually start the music. Let's get the vibes going here. Here we go. All righty. So let's go to the bracket. Okay. So as we can see, uh, I'm pretty sure most of you by now have seen the bracket, but just in case any of you have not, we'll go over it really quick. So for the wild card game in the American League, we're going to have the Red Sox and the Yankees. Uh, the winner of that game will go on to face the Rays. Uh, on the other side of the bracket in the American League, we're going to have the White Sox and the Astros. In the National League, we're going to have the Dodgers Cardinals in the wild card game. Uh, the winner of that game will go on to face the Giants in the division round. And on the other side of the bracket in the National League, we have the Braves and the Brewers. So, uh, real quick, let's just take a quick look at Fangraphs. Let's see what they're thinking right now. So they're picking their uh, their two favorites right now, the Dodgers and the Giants. So uh, not really surprised there. I mean, they've been uh, huge fans of the Dodgers all year. Uh, oh, we got a subscriber. What's going on? Clutch1727. Hello. Welcome to the channel. Um, so these are the two favorites on Fangraphs uh, for right now. And then if you go into Tier 2, um, or actually these are the, so they're putting the NL, so tier one. Okay. So they have these two teams as the top two. I'm, or are they just separating it by NL and AL? All right, whatever. I'm not sure how exactly they mean here, but, uh, their favorites in the AL, they're going with the White Sox and the Rays. And then tier three, uh, we got Yankees, Astros, Red Sox, Braves, and Brewers. And then they have a tier four. They have the Cardinals as the underdogs. So uh, going to be very interesting to see how all of these teams stack up here. Uh, there's a lot of good matchups here. Uh, there's a lot of different ways this postseason can go. I am very, very excited to see what ends up happening in this postseason. So uh, let's get to it here. Let's get to it. And actually, here, let's get you guys involved. What do you think? Uh, give this a thumbs up, thumbs down. Do you agree with Fangraphs on the, on the top two favorites here, the Dodgers and the Giants? Let me know. They actually have... So I'm kind of confused on how they're doing this. So I don't know if Tier 1 is above Tier 2 or if they're just separating the National League and the American League. Because the Giants, they have at an 8.7% World Series odds... And then the White Sox are at 14.6, so I'm not sure. I just don't know how they're exactly splitting this up, but I, I, I would assume if they're in Tier 1, these are the, the two favorites for the World Series. I'm, again, I'm not really sure what they're doing here. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with uh, what Fangraphs is saying here? Do you think these are the favorites in the National League? Do you think these are the favorites in the American League? Uh, do you think these teams maybe should be up higher? Um, do you think the Cardinals are the underdog of the playoffs? Let me know what you think. So, all righty. Let's start things off. You know what? Let's get my Red Sox out of the way first. Let's just get these guys out of the way. For the Red Sox this year, if we go take a look at the offense, the Red Sox, they've had a very good offense uh, this season. Hey, very good, very consistent. Seventh overall 
in the offense. If we take a look as of right now uh, for the stats on the season, Xander Bogarts, their best overall player when you look at offense and defense. Raphael Devers, uh, flat out awesome this year with the bat, 38 home runs, 113 RBIs, a 352 on base. Raphael Devers had the game of his life in game 162. Uh, Kike Hernandez ended up being a very solid addition. J.D. Martinez with a steady season. I mean, just missed 30 and 100. Alex Verdugo ended up being really solid this year. A 351 on base, a 289 average. Uh, sure, maybe not Mookie Betts level, but hey, Alex Verdugo, he's been pretty pretty solid this year. Hunter Renfro, hey, 30 home runs from him this year, over a 500 slug, and gotta love that. Kyle Schwarber, nice addition uh, at the trade deadline. Even Bobby Dahlback, 25 home runs. Christian Arroyo was uh, doing some good things, you know, before and around the All-Star break. He ended up getting hurt, so didn't really hear too much of him at that point. Uh, for the starting pitching, the Red Sox ranked seventh overall in the major leagues this year. What I liked about the Red Sox starting pitching is, you know, it wasn't very flashy. They just kind of made their starts. They, you know, they logged their innings and uh, they just gave their team a chance to win. Nathan Evaldi, a very good year from him. Uh, I feel like a pretty underrated year. A 3.75 ERA, but that FIP was a full run lower. Gotta love that. Eduardo Rodriguez, kind of the same thing. Uh, a full run lower there. Actually, a run and a half lower on the FIP. Um, so he definitely had some better advanced numbers, good strikeout numbers from him. Tanner Houck, uh, again, another one. Uh, a full run lower on the FIP. Um, but yeah, Nick Pavetta ended up being a very solid addition for the Red Sox this year. I'm not surprised about that because Nick Pavetta, this guy had some good stuff with Philly. Just, it didn't seem like he really just had it all together. And the Red Sox, he came over here. They had a plan for him. Ended up having a really good season with the Red Sox. Overall, 30 starts for him. Came out of the bullpen, uh, to close it out yesterday in game 162. Um, but uh, overall, and then they got Chris Sale back late. And, and he, I'd say Chris Sale, he was good for the most part. He struggled yesterday in that last game. But overall, Chris Sale through nine starts, you could tell like it, it probably he's going to need a full spring training, you know, to kind of really get back to the Chris Sale that we know. But overall, I think very solid for him. Uh, for the bullpen, the Red Sox bullpen really struggled down the stretch. Um, but overall on the year, they did rank ninth. Uh, it had they had their issues you know late you know going into that last month there very up and down even in august as well garrett whitlock had a very good season ended up getting injured there you know in the last couple of weeks so but he's back now matt barnes uh kind of an up and down year good amount of strikeouts for him he was definitely good in the first half and he had his ups and downs in the second half josh taylor pretty underrated garrett richards much better in the bullpen after uh moving from the starting rotation to there Ottavino. He wore down as the season went on. Hanzo Robles was a good addition at the deadline for them. A lot of people kind of questioned that move, but uh, he had way better numbers with the Red Sox. So overall, uh, the Red Sox, hey, they're in this wild card game, and it's going to be interesting to see what they end up doing here against the Yankees. And uh, I mean, hey, I think both of these teams, this, this could go either way. Um, but let's talk about the Yankees on the other side. So this Yankees team. It's, uh, at, well, let's go look at fan graphs. Actually, let me mention this really quick. So for the Red Sox, they have the Red Sox and an 8% chance to win the World Series. For the Yankees, they have about a 7.6% chance. It's very interesting. So they give the Red Sox a slightly higher percent chance. So, I mean, it's crazy to think because preseason, they had the Yankees at a right near the top, right behind the Dodgers. So uh, for the Yankees, taking a look at the New York Yankees, when it comes to the offense, it was a very up and down offense. It was hot and cold. You know, hot, they were, re they were red hot. Cold, ice cold. You know, very up and down. You didn't know what you were going to get with this Yankees offense. You know, they had a Forrest Gump box of chocolates offense. You didn't know what you were going to get. They could either pound you or they could, they could just go silent. So, but there's a lot of good things about this Yankee lineup. Um, I mean, I really like a lot of these guys in the lineup. Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton, to just name a couple right off the bat. Uh, both had over 30 home runs this year. Actually, it had at least 35. Just missed 100 RBIs for both. Each of them had at least a 350 on base. Good sluggings. Uh, DJ LeMayhew, let's actually see. What's the status on DJ LeMayhew? Looks like he's going to be out at least for... I, I feel like he had a hernia. Was that what I saw with him? I'm not... They're saying hip here, but... 
he, uh, as of right now, he's on the IL. Could he make it back? If they can make it uh, past the division round, could you maybe see DJ LeMahieu come back for the championship series if they make it that far? Uh, he ended up doing better as the season, you know, uh, kind of came down the stretch. But overall, not a great season for DJ LeMahieu. He was way better in 2020. So not really sure. But he did provide a versatility. That's the one thing about DJ LeMahieu where he can move around and play different positions. So that was a big help for them overall. For the Yankees, uh, other than these three guys, Glaber Torres started hitting better down the stretch. Gary Sanchez, always a home run threat. Brett Gardner, better down the stretch. Uh, Gio Urshela, he started heating up a great catch in the last game. I mean, good grief. That dude ran all the way across the left side of the infield on a full sprint and just basically dove head first into the dugout. That was awesome. If you didn't see that, go on YouTube right now and go look up that catch Tyler Wade ended up being pretty good down the stretch for them he provided some speed that's what the Yankees really kind of lacked especially in the first half so he ended up being a, a pretty decent contributor for the Yankees off the bench Anthony Rizzo he was hot when he first came over uh kind of cooled down a little bit he ended up going on the COVID list and it just felt like he never really got his mojo back and speaking of trades they got Joey Gallo I mean he was this is so Joey Gallo right here. He hit 160 for them over the 58 games, a 303 on base. I mean, but he had 13 home runs, so that's not bad. But man, you want to see just that average be better, man. Like, I just hate looking at that. I know it's kind of what Joey Gallo does, but I'm just not a big fan. Um, and the slugging wasn't very high with him either. So, I mean, we'll have to see what he can do. Can he come up big for the Yankees in the wild card game? And if they can make it to the division round, can he come up big for them in the division round? But overall, uh, this Yankees offense is hot and cold. You don't know what you're going to get. They can either just completely just hit every ball to the moon or they'll just go to sleep. So have to wait and see how they end up doing in the wild card game tomorrow night, which I will be here for live at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. So be here tomorrow night uh, for the Yankees with their starting pitching for their starting pitching they ranked six overall in Major League Baseball this year you know kind of a, a very interesting staff you know led by Garrett Cole and after that you know a bit of a question mark with them you know Jordan Montgomery he was pretty solid for the year uh, but overall just he overall he was good but uh, towards the end of the season kind of started struggling a little bit there um, with a Jamison Tyone, he, you know, I still remember going back to this offseason. I remember thinking like, man, go after a Joe Musgrove, you know, and the Padres ended up getting him. And the, so the Yankees ended up getting a Jamison Tyone and he was OK, more of like a fourth starter kind of a guy, kind of numbers, you know, 29 starts, a 4.30 ERA, under nine strikeouts per nine. Um, you know, he'll have a role. He'll definitely have a role here with the Yankees. Uh, how how they use him, you know, maybe a few innings, you know, starting, you know, a few, couple innings out of the bullpen. Have to wait and see how they end up using him. Corey, Corey Kluber, this is an interesting one. A bit of a wild card, in my opinion. Uh, didn't get a, a ton of innings down the stretch. He came back from injury in uh, late in August. He missed almost about three months right there. Um, he ended up getting up to around six innings there. He had a really good start against Cleveland, but then, you know, couldn't even, couldn't make it out of the fifth in his last two starts. So it's going to be interesting to see, especially, you know, against the, if they can make it against the Rays, very interesting to see how far he can go, uh, against the Rays. I mean, if you go back to a start here early on, I mean, he only had, I mean, well, they were kind of nursing his pitch count there a little bit but he did not fare well against the Rays I understand that was in April but uh, it's a dynamic offense there so interesting to see how Corey Kluber could end up doing in my opinion a bit of an x-factor in the end the Yankees they, they do got Garrett Cole Garrett Cole hey he's uh, one of the best pitchers in the game so he had a very solid season 16 and 8 30 starts uh, 2.92 FIP so Garrett Cole, pretty good. Nestor Cortez had a pretty solid season for the Yankees. Uh, 14 starts, a 3.07 ERA over the nine strikeouts per nine. So uh, the Yankees, they have options here. It's not the best starting staff out there, but hey, I mean, you know, they have options. So that's definitely good. You're going to have Garrett Cole in the wild card game. Uh, so that in itself could be if the Yankees make it past the Red Sox. That's, you know, you're going into that series with the Rays 
basically Corey, I would imagine you're going to go Corey Kluber game one, probably Jordan Montgomery game two, and then you got Garrett Cole game three, unless you go Garrett Cole on, you know, super short rest in like a game two. But I would imagine they would probably save Cole for a game three there. And then at that point, who knows what you even got at that point. But um, very interesting. But the big thing for the Yankees, the big thing for the Yankees is this bullpen. Uh, third overall in the bullpen this year. Just very solid. Take a look at this bullpen here. Aroldis Chapman really got himself turned around. He had some struggles there uh, around the All-Star break. He was not looking too good at one point, but he's looking a lot better lately. Jonathan Loisaga, this guy's just nasty. This dude throws like 100 miles an hour with his sinker. The guy's nasty. Jack Green, Clay Holmes, Luis Severino, that's going to be a, a very good weapon for the Yankees. So... Uh, you know, coming back from Tommy John, he hasn't, he didn't give up a run in how many innings did he throw? Four, six innings, four games total. So, hey, Luis Severino, this could be a multi-inning guy. Um, so that's kind of what I'm saying when they have options. You know, you could go with like a Tyone or whatever, or Kluber if you can only go a few innings with them. At least you got Severino for maybe two or three innings. So that's something to think about. Um, but overall, I really like this Yankees bullpen. It's one of the best in the game. So... Uh, very interested to see what the Yankees end up doing. It's going to be a good wild card game tomorrow in the uh, for the American League. 8 o'clock. Be here tomorrow night. We'll be watching. Um, but let's stay in the American League here. Let's move on. Let's talk about the Rays. Let's talk about the Rays. The best team in the American League. I mean, this Rays team is just fantastic. As of right now, um, they... Fangraphs gives the Rays a 7.1% chance to win the World Series. Uh, again, the best record in the American League this year. I really like this Rays team. I saw the Rays live uh, late in July when my Red Sox went to the trop. My Red Sox got just completely spanked by the Rays. But just watching that team, watching the at bats that they had, it's it's like it's weird how you just can you can when you watch it in person, you're so dialed in on everything going on on TV. You know, you kind of got, you know, whatever else going on in your life. But when I was just there at Tropicana Field and I'm just watching these Rays hitters, just work counts, make great contact, just great at bats all the way around. And they just, they just looked so good. And, and the pitching, it was just so, they were just, man, it was just so calculated the way they just had these guys coming in and out. And they're, they just know what they're doing there in Tampa Bay. They know what they're doing. Um... This is a very good team. This is a very good team. Uh, I wouldn't want to just point out the offense first. So Tampa Bay's offense ranked third in Major League Baseball this year. Just so good. And what I really like about Tampa Bay is they just got all these guys that can do different things. You know, Brandon Lau, I want to point this out with him. This dude had a heck of a season. 39 home runs, just missed 100 RBIs, a 340 on base, 523 slugging. Look at someone like Mike Zanino. He's going to give you some power and really good defense. Look at someone like Randy Rosarina. You know, 20 home runs, but 20 stolen bases. You got to love that. Joey Wendell, Mr. Versatility. This guy can move around in the infield. Hey, hey Joey Wendell, solid player. Really like Joey Wendell. Kevin Kiermeyer, always going to give you great defense out there. Wander Franco. You know, hey, while these guys are giving you some power, Wander Franco is going to kind of give you more of that contact uh, while getting on base and providing some speed. This guy in 70 games had a 3.1 base running. I believe that ranked second on the Rays uh, behind Brandon Lau, and that was in only 70 games. This guy wrecks havoc on the bases. Um, I mean, and, and he gets on base. It, it's that's just a that's a terrifying combo. Uh, and then you got some, you know, someone else like Austin Meadows providing some power as well. Even guys like Yandy Diaz, Brett Phillips, they're uh, contributing to this team. Brett Phillips, 14 stolen bases there. Manuel Margo, 13 right there as well. Um, I just really like all of the different things that the Rays have within this lineup. It's just, uh, it's honestly kind of just a pleasure to watch this team just go through a lineup. They're just so good, and they're so just, oh, as a Red Sox fan, I hate it, but like, man, but as a baseball fan, I, I just love watching what these guys bring to the table. Uh, when we take a look at the starting pitching, I mean, let's be real with the Tampa Bay Rays. I mean, their, their starting pitching is pretty non-existent. I mean, you got a lot of guys opening games, um, but taking a look here, I mean, you got a couple of guys that you can consistently start. You got Shane McClanahan. Imagine if they had a Tyler Glasnow right now. I mean, good grief. Could this guy... Uh, you know what? I'm going to say this right now. I think with Tyler Glasnow, if he ended up sticking around, you know, not getting hurt, 
I think this is a guy that he probably could have won that Cy Young in the American League. I mean, considering, you know, no one really ran away with the Cy Young in the American League this year. If Tyler Glasnow made all of his starts and he was healthy, I think he would have won the Cy Young. This dude was on pace uh, to just have a really good season. Uh, it's a shame. It's a shame that they don't have him, uh, you know, and I'm sure he is just, you know, just, ugh. You got, you got to feel for him, man. Uh, but you got guys like Shane McClanahan who can make starts consistently. I think they're going to, they're, you know, this is a guy where, you know, they're comfortable, you know, going with him, you know, five or six innings. But I think they're okay with, you know, maybe even going three innings as well with him. Um, so definitely look out for him. I think he's going to be a big part of what the Rays, uh, whatever they end up doing here in the postseason. Ooh, Will Cat and $5 Super Chat. Everyone's sleeping on the Rays, pitching, but they have a sneaky good starters and a dominant bullpen. So, yeah, um, I mean, the bullpen is fantastic. We'll get to that here in a second. But uh, the starting pitching, sure, while they're not going to give you, you know, a ton of innings, they're going to get guys that will give you just some solid, get, you know, solid starts, whether if it's, you know, just opening up for three innings or whatever. You know, Drew Rasmussen as well. You know, this is a guy where he's pitched, you know, five innings recently a couple of times, and he's looked really good at 2.44 ERA, 2.86 FIP. Um, you know, Ryan Yarbrough, don't like those numbers so much, but let's actually pull up the game log. What has he been doing recently? Uh, four and two-thirds innings the other day against Houston, gave up a few runs. But you, Ryan Yarbrough, this is a guy where you're comfortable putting him out there. Um, so let's take a look at this game log. I mean, hey, he actually looked really good against Miami. I mean, granted, Miami has the worst offense in baseball. But Detroit, you know, six innings there, not bad. Houston, whatever, he held him to three runs there. And that's a good offense right there. Uh, he definitely did not look very good against Toronto. Gave up seven runs there. Looked horrible against the Red Sox. So those numbers are a little inflated. He had a couple of, you know, back-to-back -back pretty bad starts right there. That's going to jack up your ERA a ton. But he looked good against the Red Sox before this start. Only gave up two runs in six innings. So I think Ryan Yarbrough, he's going to be solid for the Rays. I think they're... They're going to put all of these guys, and it's not just the Rays pitching that they're talented, it's the coaching staff. They're going to, you know, Kevin Cash, he's going to put these guys into the into the good spots that they need to be in. So it's a team effort there with the pitching. It's very calculated. I think all of these guys are going to get put into good spots. Let's take a look at the bullpen, a phenomenal bullpen, the best bullpen in all of Major League Baseball this year. Uh, I mean, what else is there to say? A 3.24 ERA, a 3.59 FIP. Uh, you got to love what the Tampa Bay Rays do with that bullpen. I mean, take a look at some of these guys here. Andrew Kittredge, um, you know, kind of a little up and down recently, but I think he's going to end up being fine. Um, you know, Pete Fairbanks. Colin McHugh has been very underrated this year. Uh, David Robertson, uh, as a good veteran guy that they added for that bullpen. Uh, I think that's he's going to be big for them in the postseason. Got to love a, go, a good veteran guy that can just come in and just get you some outs. Uh, Shagwa, Conley's going to be back eventually. Nick Anderson should be fine. Uh, he should be ready to go for the postseason. We were looking at the news for him yesterday. Uh, nothing updated yet, but he said he was confident that he's going to be ready for their first postseason game in a few days. So... You gotta love just. I just. I really like this Rays team. They're just overall sure. You would love to have you know someone like a uh, like a Tyler Glasnow to you know give you just a, a solid game one start. You know in the division series, championship series, World Series, whatever it is. But um, hey, you know unfortunately they they do they do not have a Tyler Glasnow. But I think again they're gonna put these guys into the best spots possible. They're gonna. They're always going with the matchups. They're always looking at the numbers. So I think the Rays, uh, overall, I really like the offense. I think that, and I really like that bullpen. I mean, they guess they got arms all over the place, but I just really like this offense. I really do. And they play great defense as well. Uh, so actually, let me take a look at Tampa Bay's defense. Where did they rank? Uh, Tampa Bay. Where was Tampa Bay? Tampa Bay, where are they? I could have sworn I saw something a little... I thought I saw something different. The Rays here. So why is this different? I'm kind of confused. Anyway, but when you look at the fielding on Fangraphs, the Rays, they rank ninth overall this year when it comes to fielding. So uh, I really like this Rays team. They play fundamental baseball. They just do the right things that you got to do. 
So it's a it's a team effort. It's it's an organizational effort. That's what I really like with them. So uh, moving on, let's go to the other two teams in the American League, and then we'll get to the National League. So uh, White Sox. Let's talk about them. This is a fun team for the White Sox as of right now. Fangraphs gives them a 14.6% chance. Is this to win the World Series or is this just to make the World Series? I'm not quite sure. Let me actually here. Let's pull this up really quick. Uh, do I go to, here we go, 2021 playoff odds. Okay, here we go. Win the World Series, MLB. So, okay, so yeah, that okay. So that's to win the World Series. So let's go back here. Um, but yeah, 14.6% chance to win the World Series. The White Sox this year, uh, I really like this White Sox team. It's a very balanced team. The only thing I didn't like about the White Sox this year is they just didn't perform very well against teams over 500. They had a losing record against those good teams. Uh, so that's one thing I'm very curious about. They ended up, I think they split with the Astros this year. I think they went, what was it, 3-3? Three and three? 2021 White Sox. Uh, did they go three and three? I feel like I might be wrong on that. Uh, Houston. Oh no, I, I'm 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 thinking of another team. Two and five against the Astros this year. So uh, very interesting to see how they perform in this series. But let's take a look here at the offense. Hey, you got bats all over the place in this White Sox lineup. Overall, they ranked, I believe it was fourth or fifth. They were fourth this year in the offense. Just a ton of bats. A ton of bats. Let's pull up these guys here. Uh, starting off with the Tim Anderson. This guy, just a very good season overall. Very balanced season. 17 home runs, 61 RBIs. He provided some speed. 18 stolen bases. Look at the base running. A 6.1 base running. He was good in the field. A 309 average. A 338 on base. Love me some Tim Anderson. Yohan Mankata, a very good season overall. Uh, hey, Hitting for average, getting on base, 14 homers, 61 RBIs. Good defense out there as well. Uh, Yasmani Grandal, 93 games this year, but hit 23 home runs, uh, 62 RBIs, a 420 on base. You got to love that. Luis Robert missed some time with injury this year. But hey, this guy's going to be a stud eventually once he you know just stays healthy. Uh, um, Emila... Wait, em Emiliano Brito with a 499 super chat. What's going on, my friend? To be honest, lots of winning teams have under 500 records. That is definitely something to point out there. Um, so in the end, I think I'm not going to weigh that too heavily. It just, I think, would have been nice to see them, you know, perform a little better against some of these teams that were over 500. I don't think it's the end all be all by any means. Um, you know, just kind of would have been nice to maybe see a few more wins, but I agree with you. I don't think it's going to be, uh, that big of a deal in the end. So it really just comes down to, Hey, how do you scout against these teams? How do you prepare for these teams? Uh, what game plans are you going to have? Are you going to execute your game plans? So I think for the White Sox, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Just would have been nice. Uh, but Jose Abreu, 30 home runs, 117 RBIs. A very typical Jose Abreu year. Uh, just a lot of bats here. Eloy Jimenez came back, uh, provided some offense for the White Sox there as well. But hey, for the White Sox, you got to love the starting pitching for the Chicago White Sox. Overall, third on the year. Just a lot of good arms with the White Sox staff and you know what for a for a playoff series I mean what more could you want you know from these four guys Carlos Rodon I would imagine he's going to get the game one start I mean right I mean you got to think he's going game one I'm not sure if that's been announced um oh wait what's going on here oh did I miss something here oh no he doesn't know if Rodon will be on the LDS oh I missed this oh shoot what's going on with him Oh, I completely missed this. Carlos Rodon. Uh, okay, so he says he's optimistic. Healthy enough. Rodon healthy enough to help in the playoffs. So what ended up happening with him? Was it something with... Like, I thought he came back. Oh, man, I missed this completely. I thought he was he was back. So I know, I know he had some shoulder stuff going on, but... Ah, huh, interesting. So... All right, well, okay. Well, that's definitely something to keep an eye on. But hey, they say they're optimistic with him helping. Either way, if he ends up having a role, he's going to be very good. Because, uh, I mean, look at the year he had. A very good year. 2.37 ERA at 2.65 FIP. Um, whatever he ends up doing here, I think he is 
he's going to be a big piece. So uh, hopefully he's good, he's healthy, and he can contribute. Uh, but even without him, you still got guys like Lucas Giolito and Lance Lynn. I really like that. And then, hey, Dylan Cease this year having a very underrated year, 13-7 and seven on the year through 32 starts. Uh, a ton of strikeouts with him. A very good year from him. So even without a Carlos Rodon, if that ends up not really being an option for them, you still got three solid guys here. Uh, a Lucas Giolito, a Lance Lynn, and a Dylan Cease. I, I really like that a lot. I think those are two, three really good starters. And then if Rodon can come back, that's just icing on the cake. So um, I, I really like what they have in terms of starting pitching. But the the best part about this team it's just this bullpen this bullpen is absolutely nasty uh with the chicago white Sox. you got arms all over the place sure craig kimbrell kind of struggled with the white Sox this year um kind of reminds me almost of not fully maybe not to this level but he reminds me of eric gagne when the red Sox got him in 2007 everyone was like wow we got Eric Gagne. This guy's having a great year in Texas. And then Eric Gagne came over. Just had a horrible time with the Red Sox that year. I don't know if anyone in the chat remembers that. But good grief. But uh, Kimbrell has not had this, the smoothest time there on the other side of Chicago. But you got Liam Hendricks. Aaron Bummer's been really good. Ryan Tapera ended up being very good for the White Sox. So luckily they got you know something good for their bullpen at the deadline. Michael Kopech, Garrett Crochet. Love this bullpen with the White Sox. You got power arms all over the place. Uh, this is a bullpen that can get it done for you. Really like this White Sox team. I think they're going to be very solid. Um, I just think they really match up well, you know, with a team like the Astros. I think uh, they can be a very competitive team here. And hey, I, I'm, a, I'm a big Tony La Russa fan, you know, maybe uh, a little more old school, but I like me some Tony La Russa. What can I say? Uh, but he's going to have a tough task against the Houston Astros. This Houston Astros team very good and they're gonna they're gonna be very tough to beat take a look at the houston astros here a 15.3 percent chance to win it all uh it's a very good team very solid starting off with the offense houston the best offense this year by far sure toronto came on really strong there at the end but houston uh just a phenomenal year with this offense overall take a look at some of these bats that houston had this year uh, even losing a George Springer, they were still just on top of their game. Carlos Correa, this guy's going to get a nice juicy contract this offseason. He picked the best year to finally just, you know, stay healthy and just put up good numbers all across the board, uh, both offensively and defensively. Jose Altuve, 31 home runs, quietly hit 31 home runs. I feel like I didn't hear anything about Altuve. 83 RBIs, a 350 on base. Kyle Tucker, a very underrated season. I can't say this enough. Hit 294, 359 on base. Um, 14 stolen bases as well. Kyle Tucker, please show him some love. Um... Jordan Alvarez, 30 homers, 100 RBIs. I mean, solid if you ask me. Uh, Yuli Gurriel, he contributed this year. Michael Brantley getting on base. I mean, there's a lot to like here. There's a lot to like. Even Alex Bregman, sure, a little low on the homers and the RBIs. But in the end, I mean, a 355 on base, that's pretty decent if you ask me. Uh, Chaz McCormick, after you know taking over in center field, Ended up being pretty good. Jake Myers was okay as well. So uh, I really like a, a lot of what the Astros have. I think their their offense, I mean, it's as good as it gets, everyone. So the starting pitching, I'm a little iffy about this starting pitching. They rank 10th overall. What I like about them is they are going to... They're going to keep you in games. They're not going to be... I don't think they're going to be very flashy overall. But, uh, you know, it's, you, I would just, uh, I don't know. I feel like they're just lacking like a real like thumper of an ace, if that makes any sense. Ooh, uh, Emiliano Brito with a 199 Super Chat. La Russa, uh, Baker rivalry continues. You know, that's another, you know, fun aspect of this series. You got two veteran managers going at it in the first round. That's a great storyline. Um, I love it. I love it. I think that's actually one of the more underrated storylines uh in the first round or if they end up um if uh sorry uh if wait no yeah yeah, yeah no i yeah, no, i'm getting mixed up here my potato brain sorry uh but yeah um you, you just gotta love the veteran matchup right there with the managers i love it i love it i love it could you imagine if tony la Russa and the white Sox end up making it to the world series 
Can you imagine the Cardinals making it to the World Series? I mean, what a storyline that would be. Tony La Russa going up against the team that he led to all those wins, all the championships. So, uh, Tony La Russa, you know, I, uh, I really, really like Tony La Russa a lot. I know he's had his issues, but I think the guy is one of the best managers of all time. I mean, by far. I, I, there's no argument for that. And Dusty Baker. It'd be nice if Dusty Baker can get, you know, can get a championship. That'd be pretty nice, but... You're very right about that. The rivalry continues. Um, but for the starting pitching with the Astros, hey, you know, they don't they don't have that thumper of an ace kind of a guy. Um, in the end, I like what they have to offer. You got a Lance McCullers Jr. who's going to go game one. He was solid this year. Uh, Luis Garcia, hey, uh, good rookie season from him. Um, you know, what could he end up doing in the postseason? It's a, you know, much uh, more pressure on that kind of a stage. Uh, you know, you got Framber Valdez, Zach Granke, surprisingly, um, you know, not a great year overall. Looks like he's actually going to be coming out of the bullpen over, uh, to uh, start things off, according to some of the things Dusty Baker was saying. They're at least thinking about it. But he had something going on with the neck and... You know, it's probably going to be the best option for a Granky right now to get a few innings. But uh, whatever, Granky, while the numbers may not look all that great for this year, he's still a veteran arm. This guy knows how to pitch. Um, I think Zach Granky, whatever he ends up doing here in the postseason, I think he uh, is going to be very valuable. But uh, I'm okay with the starting pitching. I'm not like, whoa, with the starting pitching. I think it's solid. I think it can, you know, get the job done. Um, I worry a little bit about the bullpen. They ranked 14th overall. Again, it's eh, they have some good arms in there. I'm just a little eh, you know. I'm a little eh with this bullpen. It's not. They got some guys. They they got some guys. I'm okay with some of these guys. You know, Ryan Presley, uh, Kendall Graven was okay after coming over to them. I think he was a bit, a bit better with the Mariners. You know, Ryan Stanek, uh, Yimi Garcia. You know, I'm just not. You know. Uh, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a, you know, big proponent of the ERA, but you know, I'd like to see some ERAs look a little lower when it comes to the relievers. But um, overall, it's not a bad bullpen. I just don't think it's great. Um, we'll have to see how they perform, you know, in a uh, five-game series with the White Sox. So um, we'll get to that series here in a little bit. I'll give my predictions on that. Let's move over. To the National League, let's uh, let's start talking about these National League teams. We got five teams to talk about here, and then after this, we will go to my predictions. So uh, let's start off. Hey, let's start off with the Dodgers. Why not? Let's start off with the Dodgers. Uh, then we'll go to the Cardinals. Let's preview the wild card teams first, and then we'll get to the division winners um, for the Dodgers. Hey, I mean, you know. It's a phenomenal team. They've had their fair share of injuries this year. Uh, you know, also losing a Trevor Bauer. Um, could that end up being, you know, a pretty big loss in the end? I mean, Clayton Kershaw, you don't know what's going on with him. Uh, you ended up losing a Dustin May. You know, surprisingly enough, I mean, could you imagine if they, you know, didn't have all of this depth? They'd be in a, they'd be in a lot of trouble right now. So um, the fact that they, you know, have lost a lot of guys... Uh, you know, they still have a lot of guys, you know, still that can, you know, provide you some really solid innings uh, from that starting rotation. But uh, the Dodgers, <clears throat> sorry, the Dodgers, as of right now, uh, they have a, I believe, the highest percent chance to win the World Series, according to Fangraphs. So a 16.5% chance. So I think that is the highest, right? Yeah, that's the highest. They, they have loved the Dodgers all year. Uh, Fangraphs, they, I don't know if it's just me. Um, they tend to be a little biased towards this Dodgers team, but they're very good. They're very good. So let's take a look at the Dodgers. Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what ends up happening with, you know, Max Muncy. Is he going to be able to make it back for any kind of postseason action? We'll have to wait and see. But overall, they ranked six in the offense this year. I mean, even without a Max Muncy, you still got bats all over the place. Uh, guys like Will Smith. Justin Turner, Corey Seager, Mookie Betts, AJ Pollock, Chris Taylor, and, uh, you know, might I add, Trey Turner. Trey Turner, I mean, just phenomenal with the Dodgers, you know, down the stretch. If we take a look at how he did with the Dodgers, hit 338 with a 385 on base and a 565 slugging over those 52 games, had 10 homers, 28 RBIs, 11 stolen bases. I mean, Trey Turner, phenomenal. I mean, there's an argument that you could give him the MVP 
this year. I mean, this guy had just a phenomenal, just all around good season. Um, unfortunately, he only, you know, had a limited time with the Dodgers. So I would imagine just because of the trade, he, you know, will that matter? You know, I don't know. I think Trey Turner, um, when you look at all those guys in the National League, I mean, it's a pretty wide open race. I mean, why not? Why can't Trey Turner get the MVP? He had a really good season no matter where, wherever he played, whether it was in Washington or with the Dodgers. So, I don't know. I think Trey Turner deserves some votes overall. I mean, I know a lot of people will think, oh, well, he only played 52 games with the Dodgers. But, I mean, overall, this guy was just great. Um, but, overall, this Dodgers offense, they got a lot of bats. I mean, even someone like Gavin Lux as well. Uh, It'll be interesting to see how they do without Max Muncy. But luckily, they got a guy named Albert Pujols there. He's uh, he's still hitting home runs out there. So uh, I think Albert Pujols, maybe he won't be at the level of a Max Muncy. It's still a fine guy to, obviously, I mean, the guy's a legend. But, I mean, hey, if you're going to have any guy come in and fill in, uh, Albert Pujols is not, not a bad option. So uh, let's go to that starting pitching. The starting pitching overall ranked first this year for the Los Angeles the Dodgers. Let's pull up some of these guys. Uh, again, they had they had their injuries this year. They had you know guys like Trevor Bauer uh, basically just disappear. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see what ends up happening with Clayton Kershaw. Can he come back and contribute? I feel like you're going to end up seeing him uh, if they make it past the division round. Um, I think you could end up seeing him. I, but it, it'll be interesting to see. Can they make it past the division round? We'll see. Uh, can they make it past the wild card game? I mean, we'll have to see. But you got good options here. Uh, Walker Bueller, Julio Urias, and of course, Max Scherzer. Max Scherzer's going in this wild card game. Uh, sure, a couple of bumpy starts, you know, to end the season. But Max Scherzer, this guy's a bulldog. He's a gamer. That's going to be a tough guy to beat in a wild card game. Uh, he has been phenomenal with the Dodgers. 7-0, over 11 starts, a 1.98 ERA, a 1.95 FIP, just under 12 strikeouts per nine, one walk per nine, under one home run per nine. Like, are you kidding me? Max Scherzer, insane. What a, what a run this year. I mean, also, look out for him to get some Cy Young votes out there. I'm just saying. Uh, but you also have a David Price. I mean, you got Tony Gonsolin that can come in and do some and make some starts. Uh, I would think more likely, I mean, if I were to, I don't know, who do you end up giving a game, if you go game four, so let's say, uh, let's say the division round, Max Scherzer, he'll end up going in the wild card game. Let's say they make it past the Cardinals. We'll talk about them next, but Walker Bueller, Urias. I mean, I would imagine you probably go I guess it really just depends on the matchup. Um, who would you be more comfortable going with? Would you be more comfortable going with a David Price or a Tony Gonsolin? I don't know. That's uh, very interesting to see which direction they end up going. If they need if they need one of those guys, Max Scherzer will probably come back for a game three. Um, but let's say you know they make it to the championship round. You know you got those three guys, and who would you go for a game four? Uh, Price or Gonsolin? Have to wait and see. Or could you go both? But uh, the bullpen. Let's talk about this bullpen. Uh, the Dodgers overall fifth. They actually did a lot better in the second half. Uh, I really like this bullpen. Really like it overall. Uh, taking a look here at the Dodgers. I mean, Kenley Jansen. You never know what you're going to get with Kenley Jansen in the postseason. You just never know. Uh, always looking pretty good in the regular season, but when the postseason comes on, it, it just something seems to happen to Kenley Jansen. But you got some other guys, Blake Trainin, Alex Vasilla, Corey Kniebel, Joe Kelly, Phil Bickford. You got a bruised arc Gratterall roaming around somewhere in there. Uh, you know, hey, Dodgers bullpen looking pretty good, but they're going to have a tough task. They're going to have a tough task with the hottest team in Major League Baseball right now, the St. Louis Cardinals. I mean, what a run, 17 straight wins to make it to this point. Uh, man, St. Louis, I mean, good grief. Uh, taking a look here, they are, we looked at this earlier. As of right now, Fangraphs, they list them as the only underdog team. As of right now, a 1.3% chance to win the World Series. That is by far the by far the lowest. That is almost 6% lower than the Rays. I can't believe they have the Rays this far down. Are you kidding me? Like, that is just, I don't believe that. Um, anyway, 
But the Cardinals, uh, this team got red hot, man. Absolutely red hot. This offense was sitting around in the 20s at one point, and they climbed all the way back up to 12th overall. Let's take a look at some of these guys here in St. Louis. Tyler O'Neill deserves MVP votes. I will keep saying that over and over again. This guy deserves at least some votes. Uh, 34 home runs, 80 RBIs, 286 average, a 352 on base. He was clutch, had a 560 slugging as well. Uh, Paul Goldschmidt, very good season, 294 with a 365 on base, 31 home runs, just missed 100 RBIs. Had 12 stolen bases in there as well. Nolan Arenado, 34 home runs, 105 RBIs, played some solid Nolan Arenado kind of defense. Harrison Bader, speaking of defense, always a good glove out there. Uh, Oscar Budahan, am I pronouncing that right? Just subscribe. Welcome to the channel, my friend. Uh, but Harrison Bader turned it on with the bat a little bit this year. You like to see it. Dylan Carlson with a solid rookie season. Tommy Edmond can move around a little bit. He'll provide some good stuff for you. Really like um, you know what the St. Louis Cardinals ended up doing with this offense. You even had some other guys contribute. You know Paul DeYoung with 19 home runs. Even someone like Lars Newtbar. Am I pronouncing that right? Uh, he had he had some moments there with the with the Cardinals down the stretch as well. Yadier Molina. It's Yadier Molina. I mean, what other catcher? would you want behind the dish when it comes to defense and hey catching games for these pictures so speaking of the pitching uh isaiah webb has just subscribed what's going on how are we doing but taking a look here at the st louis cardinals pitching uh the starting pitching it's still you know not great starting pitching overall 21st on the year but in the wild card game you got your guy adam wainwright this guy had a phenomenal year uh, if you want any guy on the mound for St. Louis, it's Adam Wainwright. By far, not even a question. Um, it'd be interesting to see if Jack Flaherty ended up being, you know, healthy this year. Who would they have gone with? If you had Jack Flaherty, you know, not get hurt, you know, whatever. Who would you go with in that wild card game? Would you go with an Adam Wainwright or would you go with a healthy Jack Flaherty? Um, I'm actually interested to see Cardinals fans if Jack Flaherty ended up being healthy this year and he continued on the pace that he was on who would you rather have start that wild card game would you rather have Flaherty or Wainwright I'm actually you know you know uh, pretty interested to see what you think about that but either way uh that's just a you know that's just fantasy thinking right there Adam Wainwright that's what you got for the wild card game I mean what other veteran guy in you know the St. Louis Cardinals or for the St. Louis Cardinals would you want uh, I mean, this guy just was phenomenal this year. 17 and 7 over 32 starts, a 3.05 ERA, a 3.66 FIP. I mean, what, what does Giraffe Neck Mark say? Ages like fine wine. He would say that about Justin Verlander. Well, Adam Wainwright, give him all the wine. I mean, are you kidding me? This guy, was, was just a great season. Not a lot of strikeouts, but I, I almost kind of like it that way. You know, locating the ball, uh, moving up and down in the zone, left to right in the zone, using movement. Uh, I mean, hey, Adam Wainwright, just a phenomenal year. Um, again, it's going to be a tough matchup. Adam Wainwright, Max Scherzer. But if you want anyone going for the St. Louis Cardinals, it's Adam Wainwright. But it's not going to be just Adam Wainwright that's going to get you through that wild card game. It's going to be the bullpen as well. They got a lot of guys in the St. Louis Cardinals bullpen uh, that have really stepped up for them. They made a change at one point, making Giovanni Gallegos the closer. He's been phenomenal. Alex Reyes becoming more of a setup guy. Luis Garcia has been very good. Not the Luis Garcia on the Astros. The Luis Garcia on the Cardinals. Uh, he has been very good for them. Genesis Cabrera, McFarland have been good uh, in the relief roles. So, hey, you know, the St. Louis Cardinals bullpen, it's been very good, um, especially in the second half. So, you're going to have a, a, a very interesting matchup here. Uh, just a really talented team in the Dodgers and a very hot team in the Cardinals that just, they have figured something out here in St. Louis. But uh, let's move on. We got a few more teams to talk about. Let's talk about the division winners. Let's go to the Atlanta Braves. Let's talk about the Atlanta Braves here. You know, I feel like the Atlanta Braves, I feel like they're being slept on a little bit. It's just my personal opinion. They actually have a 9.7% chance, according to fan graphs, to win it all. I mean, you know, considering they are the only team in the playoffs that did not win 90 games this year, they have a better percent chance. I mean, that, that just blows my mind that they have a better percent chance than the Giants. Then they have a better percent chance than the Rays. 
That blows my mind. How did they come up with this? No, no disrespect to the Braves, but that's just wild. And I'm not even, I'm not looking at it in terms of numbers, but man, Fangraphs never wants to show any kind of love to the Giants or the Rays, but hey. But I, I do agree with Fangraphs. I, I, not maybe with this, but I agree that they, the Braves are a good team. Um, you know, no disrespect to the Giants or the Rays, but you know, hey, I think the Braves actually have a pretty underrated team. They lost Ronald Acuna Jr. this year, but that offense was still very good. Ranked 11th overall this year. Uh, they were way better in the second half. I really like this offense with Atlanta. They got bats up and down this lineup. Freddie Freeman, uh, I mean, leading things off here. I mean, look at what he did overall. 31 home runs, a 300 average, 393 on base. Very solid. Um, and then other guys like Ozzy Albies, Austin Riley, Dansby Swanson. Austin Riley, this guy had a heck of a season. 33 home runs, 107 RBIs, an on base of 367. This guy really pumped up the offense this year. Jorge Soler ended up being just a solid addition at the trade deadline. Didn't do anything with Kansas City, but really, really stepped it up with Atlanta. 14 home runs, 33 RBIs, a 358 on base in those 55 games. I'm going to say this right now. I said this last night, which, by the way, we streamed for four hours last night. My brain was broken pretty much today. I didn't realize I streamed that long last night. Um, I guess that's just how excited I am for the playoffs. But Ron Acuna Jr., I said this last night, if this guy stayed healthy this year, he would have been the clear-cut MVP by far. I picked him to win the MVP this year, and I'm just so sad that he just – he ended up not being healthy you know I, it's so sad to see because that guy would have won the MVP by a mile um, that pace that he was on was just ridiculous it was ridiculous but anyway um, so very good offense with Atlanta not worried about the offense there and you know what that's starting pitching in Atlanta it's 12th overall in Major League Baseball this year but you know I, I think you got to give Atlanta a little, you know, a little something here when it comes to the starting pitching. I love me some Charlie Morton. I'm a big Charlie Morton fan. I think he's been pretty underrated this year. And then you got some other guys like Max Fried, Ian Anderson, Huasker Noah. Hey, these guys are going to give you, you know, a chance to win. I like Charlie Morton there. I think, you know, especially in the postseason, has always performed well in the postseason. Um, hey, I'm real. I really like this starting staff with the with the Atlanta Braves. Don't sleep on the Braves starting pitching and the bullpen you know it's not the best out there they rank 13th overall but you got some arms in here taking a look at Atlanta um, Atlanta you got Will Smith Luke Jackson Will Smith had 37 saves this year would have liked the ERA and the FIP to be a little bit lower but uh, hey you got other options here Luke Jackson Matt Zek Richard Rodriguez has been rather decent with the Atlanta Braves in middle relief AJ Minter Chris Martin as well like this bullpen. I think it's a good bullpen. Not the best bullpen out there, but they're going to they're, they're gonna do what they can. And you know what? They're all right. They're all right. So I like Atlanta. I think uh, don't sleep on Atlanta. If you have not picked out your brackets yet, hey, don't, uh, don't just, you know, click out. Don't just click the Brewers right away just because the Brewers got 95 wins and the Braves only got 88. Don't really look at those 88 wins. Don't look at the 88 wins so much because uh, the Braves, they got a pretty solid team. Um, the Brewers. Now, let's talk about the Brewers. I think this is a very interesting team. Uh, they have the fourth best chance as of right now, according to Fangraphs, to win it all. I mean, could you imagine the Milwaukee Brewers? First ever World Series in franchise history. Uh, one of the lowest payrolls year to year. I think Milwaukee, um, that would be phenomenal if you can get Milwaukee. They're a small market team. Uh, I think that would be phenomenal. Let's start off with the offense, though. I talked about this on last night's stream. This offense doesn't really do much for me. Um, they had their moments. They definitely were better after getting a Willie Adames. But the fact that Willie Adames ended up being their best overall player and he didn't even play a full season with the Brewers, that kind of scares me a little bit. Um, where the Brewers really step up, though, is the defense. They were the best defensive team this year. You got to love what they do with the glove out there. You got a lot of good gloves. But when it comes to the lineup, you're going to be facing off against some really good pitching out there. Um, so I wonder how far the Brewers can go. It's I'm very curious to see. I'm, I would love to see the Brewers just go win the whole thing. I would love that. Um, 
but I want, I just wonder, like, you know, if it ends up, let's just say it ends up being, you know, Brewers and, you know, the Giants in the championship series. You know, you got Kevin Gosman there, uh, Logan Webb. I mean, how are you going to, with that offense, how are you going to fare against those kind of guys? You know, let's say it's the Dodgers. You got Max Scherzer, Julio Urias, Walker Bueller. You know, what's that offense going to do against those guys? Um, I don't know. It's going to be, it's going to be tough for that offense, you know, to really get through uh, it's going to be a tough road, so, but at least they can play some good defense. I'm a sucker for good defense, uh, but Milwaukee, not a great offense overall, but they make up for it with the starting pitching. Some of the best starting pitching in the game this year. Second overall, just behind the Dodgers, 0. 0.2 points behind in war behind the Dodgers. They had just phenomenal starting pitching this year. Uh, Corbin Burns, definitely a candidate for the Cy Young this year. Would not be surprised if he walks away with it. Um, wouldn't be surprised if he ends up, you know, getting just a ton of votes, you know, even way more than someone like a Max Scherzer. This guy had just phenomenal numbers, 12 and a half strikeouts per nine, 2.43 ERA, a 1.63 FIP. The voters aren't going to really look at FIP really, but that ERA is super low as well. Doesn't walk a lot of guys under a half, a, a, a under a half a home run per nine. That's phenomenal. Brandon Woodruff, that's going to be a solid guy for the number two game. Uh, 30 starts this year at 2.56 ERA. Gotta love that. Doesn't walk a lot of guys either. Freddie Peralta, that's a solid game three option, about 12 strikeouts per nine. You know, you gotta love what the Brewers can bring to the table in terms of starting pitching. You got guys here, you know, Eric Lauer as well. He was very solid this year. Adrian Hauser, he can give you something there. So I like what the Brewers have in terms of starting pitching. That's where they make me feel a little more comfortable. Um, the bullpen, though, a little worried about this bullpen with the Brewers. They're 15th overall, and that was with Devin Williams. Devin Williams, you just had to go break your hand right before the postseason. What are you doing, Devin Williams? Please go have a sandwich, my friend. I I'm sorry, but, like, what are you doing? Um, 15th overall with a Devin Williams, so who knows how this team is going to end up performing in terms of relief pitching. But the Milwaukee Brewers, I mean, I'm sorry, I I, I kind of ranted about this last night, but I don't want Brad Boxberger going late in games in the postseason. You know, one of my favorite names out there, Boxberger, I mean, what a phenomenal name, but come on. I'd rather have a Devin Williams out there in the seventh and the eighth inning. Um, hey, De Br Brad Boxberger, he's got big shoes to fill, but hey, he's a solid veteran guy. I think he's going to be, uh, he's going to give you something out there. Brent Suter. Hey, solid there and set up in the setup role as well. Aaron Ashby, I think you're going to see a, a bit of Aaron Ashby. You know, multiple innings he can give you. Hunter Strickland as well. Um, hey, and Jake Cousins should be back in time, so that's going to be a lift as well. But again, Devin Williams, please, please, I'm going to think hard, my friend, about not punching things. Can you please don't do that anymore? Um, anyway, but uh, for the Milwaukee Brewers. That, that starting pitching is going to be the key for them. But you know what? I, I don't know. Could that be the key? Or I think, you know what? Let me take that back. I think the key for the Milwaukee Brewers, they're going to need that offense to step up and they're going to need this bullpen to step up. You know the starting pitching is going to be there. It's going to be there, but they're going to need these other two aspects of this team to you know help balance things out. I think that's the key for the Brewers. Um, but they're really going to have to lean on that starting pitching. So good thing they have some good starting pitching. Let's talk about the... Uh, we saved the best for last. The best team in Major League Baseball this year. The San Francisco Giants winning the National League West on the last day of the season. The Dodgers just pushed them to the brink. Um, and hey, it took it took all 162 games to win that West. Very well deserved. The San Francisco Giants, just a very solid team. And I just think, I mean, come on. You know, fan graphs, I mean, you know, 8.7% chance to win the World Series. I know you guys like your numbers, but, I mean, come on, this Giants team, I mean, they've put up good numbers this year. Uh, you know, even in terms of the advanced numbers. Uh, and, you know, they find ways to win, and that's what I like about this Giants team. They're very good in clutch situations, but they also just have a good offense as well. Let's start with that offense here. San Francisco ranked fifth overall, just in front of the Dodgers. These two teams are so evenly matched. It took 162 games, again, to decide that National League West. Uh, and just look how close they were in terms of offense. That's just, uh, yeah. 
you did lose a Brandon Belt, you know, kind of similar with the Dodgers. You know, they lost to Max Muncy, so it kind of evens out. So I'm very interested to see uh, if these two teams end up going up against each other in the division round. I think that has the potential to be the best series in the entire postseason. I, I think that's phenomenal because they're so evenly matched. Um, but with the San Francisco Giants offense, I mean, you're starting off here with a guy like Brandon Crawford. This guy, just a phenomenal year phenomenal year good all-around game from him this year 24 home runs 90 rbis a 298 average a 373 on base i mean that is just crazy a 522 slugging very good year for him buster posey i love me some buster posey i know san francisco giants fans you love buster posey i love buster posey we all love buster posey this guy was phenomenal great defense a 390 on base just missed a 500 slugging um hey this guy's the leader of your team. You got to love it. Or at least I think he should be. I mean, Buster Posey's phenomenal. Um, didn't they give Brandon Belt the captain thing or whatever? I don't I don't remember how that story went. But unfortunately for Brandon Belt, he had the, he had the fractured thumb. Is there actually any news on that? Uh, no, not, at least any, not anything on RotoWire. But they are, you know, thinking, hey, maybe he could make it back at some point. But either way, you know, if you don't got a Brandon Belt, you got someone like a Lamont Wade Jr. who could fill in. You always got a Darren Ruff who's been great in a part-time role this year. Mikey Stremski has been heating up lately. Evan Longoria, hey, he missed some time this year, but a very solid bat, a good on base, a 351 on base. Uh, you got guys like Donovan Solano and, hey, Chris Bryant came over at the trade deadline. Big trade. You know, not amazing numbers by any means, but solid numbers. It's a great bat to have in that lineup, especially uh, with someone like a Brandon Belt going down. I think Chris Bryant is a key player for this offense. I think that is someone he's going to have. He's got to step it up in a big way for this lineup, especially to uh, replace that production of a Brandon Belt. That, that was a big bat that they lost. So you hate to see it. But I really like this offense with the San Francisco Giants. What I like about the Giants offense, take a look here, uh, in high leverage situations, which are, you know, those, those, uh, those tight situations, those pressure cooker situations from the sixth inning on, including extra innings, the San Francisco Giants only ranked behind the Seattle Mariners who had the most clutch team all year in WRC plus in these situations. San Francisco came up so big when it mattered most. And that's what I really like about the Giants. They have a consistent offense, but they came up big when they needed to. And you got to love that. They also were, I believe they were very solid in one run games. Let me actually pull up the standings here. I know I can just go look at this really quick. Uh, Giants. How were they in one run games? I could be wrong. No, they were very good in one run games, 31 and 17. So uh, those tight games, they're very good in those tight games. So got to love that with the San Francisco Giants. That starting pitching, I like, uh, I, I like how deep that starting pitching is. These guys, they bring it to the table every single day. Uh, fifth overall this year in Major League Baseball, 3.44 ERA, a 3.43 FIP. Got to love what they brought to the table. You know, Logan Webb, phenomenal I love Logan Webb I think Logan Webb go back to one of my past streams you know from last offseason I thought that guy could be a breakout player um, I'm not sure what stream that was on I'll have to dig it up but Logan Webb I mean this guy just you know coming into this year this is a guy you knew had really good stuff and when he just put it all together this guy could be phenomenal and look what he's done he's been great and he had a home run yesterday phenomenal 11 and 3 on the year 26 starts a 3.05 era a 2.73 fip gotta love what logan webb has done but kevin gosman that's the ace of your staff 33 starts a three fip a 2.81 era over 10 strikeouts per nine uh kevin gosman uh hey very good year for him on a one-year deal. He took a risk, and uh, he really he really brought it for the San Francisco Giants. Can they work out a long-term deal? Can that happen? Uh, Anthony Desclafani, Alex Wood, also both very solid. They came over this past offseason, and they were great. Johnny Cueto, you're most likely going to see in the bullpen. So speaking of the bullpen, let's take a look. Hey, the Giants, they're just balanced here. Fifth in offense, fifth in starting pitching, and sixth in relief pitching. Very good. 2.99 ERA. FIP is about a one run higher almost, but 
Uh, I like San Francisco's bullpen. They've had some guys step up for them this year. Remember, that bullpen was not very good in the beginning. They had a lot of bumps, but they have really come together out there. Jake McGee, Camilo Duvall. I mean, Camilo Duvall has really stepped up lately. Tyler Rogers, Dominic Leone, Jarlin Garcia. Look at these numbers here from these guys. Very good years. And I think Tony Watson is going to come back soon. Uh, so he was, or he should be back eventually. So retroactive to some, uh, to September 29th. So have to keep an eye out for Tony Watson, but he had himself a pretty decent year. He can give you some innings there. Uh, you know, Hey, this San Francisco, this San Francisco Giants team, I think they deserve a little more respect than an 8.7% chance. Uh, that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. So let's get to what you've all been waiting for over 300 people here in the chat. You guys are waiting. You, you already know what these teams are now that you've gotten, you know, a full, uh, a full description of all these teams. You guys want to know what I'm thinking here with my predictions. Let's get to the first matchup. Let's go to the Red Sox and the Yankees. So, uh, I mean, first off, I mean, from a, a casual baseball fan's point of view, what a wild card game this is. This is phenomenal. I mean, Red Sox, Yankees, one of the best rivalries, not just in baseball, but all of sports. Uh, a historic rivalry going back many years. And hey, going at it in a one game playoff. Uh, I really, really am excited for this. So uh, hold on. Let me get the music on everyone. I'm sorry. The music just ran out here. I've just ran through the playlist. Here we go. Let's do this one. Okay, so let's get to it here. Red Sox, Yankees. You know, it's a tough one for me. This is a tough one for me. Will Giraffe Nick Robbie show up here? This is my first time ever having my Red Sox here in this situation. Am I going to go with my Red Sox to win the whole thing? You know, I could. I very well could. I could go Giraffe Nick Robbie mode here. But you know what? I feel like in the end, I feel like the Yankees are going to end up winning this game. Unfortunately, my gut is telling me, while I want to see the Red Sox win this game, I feel like the Yankees are just going to come up big. And I feel like they're going to end up getting this done. And here's the reason why. Well, you got a couple of reasons why. You got Garrett Cole going for the Yankees. I love me some Nathan Evaldi. I love me some Nasty Nate. But Garrett Cole, when the, when the pressure's on... I believe in a Garrett Cole, and I think he's going to put it together here. He's going to come in with a good game plan. He's going to pitch a good game. And you know what? And the Yankees, they always scare me. You know, obviously, I mean, it's, it's a rivalry, of course. But the Yankees, if you take a look here, they were just slightly better than the Red Sox in these high leverage situations. And actually, if we go back to August 1st, the Yankees... Uh, they actually were a little even more better than the Red Sox in these situations. A 112 WRC plus compared to a 103. Let's actually go to September. Let's go to that final month. Uh, the Yankees. Oh, yeah. The Yankees in that final month, a 134 WRC plus. The Red Sox were also pretty good in these situations as well. I just think the Yankees are going to win this by a hair. I think it's going to be a very close game. I just think in the end, this Yankees team... They're just too talented. They're too talented. I just, I, I know the Red Sox are talented as well. I worry about the Red Sox bullpen. They've been struggling lately. I worry about late in games with the Red Sox bullpen combined with how good the Yankees can do in those high leverage situations. It, that scares me. That scares me. I think Nasty Nate, I think he's going to end up pitching pretty well. I think Garrett Cole is going to end up pitching. I think he's going to pitch phenomenal. I think he's going to pitch a heck of a game tomorrow in Fenway Park. Um, I think the Yankees, they're going to find a way to win. And that bullpen just really shuts it down. I think when you combine those things, I like the Red Sox offense. But against a good Garrett Cole, I'm just feeling the Yankees in this game. I'm feeling the Yankees. So... That's where I'm at with that. They find a way to win this game. It's going to be a close game. It's going to come down to the wire. It's going to be a nail biter, but the Yankees end up winning this. Uh, let's move on. Let's start off with, so we might as well just do the American. No, let me actually go to the other wild card game. Let's go to the other wild card game, and then we'll go back to the American League for the division round. So uh, here we go. We got Dodgers and Cardinals. Okay, I was wondering if my music was on. Uh, here we go. 
Dodgers Cardinals. This Cardinals team, they literally did everything you had to do to get to this spot. Uh, phenomenal absolutely phenomenal like it still kind of blows my mind how hot they got 17 straight wins to get to this spot you got a great starting pitching matchup you got max scherzer you got an adam wainwright in the end i just think max scherzer is too good i just think he's too good i think max scherzer kind of like a garrett cole he's gonna step it up when it matters most i think wainwright's gonna pitch solid in the end, I think the Dodgers, they just got too many bats there. I think the Dodgers bullpen, they're going to be able to lock it down at the end of the game. I think just Max Scherzer, they're going to they're just going to jump on that guy's back and they're just going to ride uh ride their way on Max Scherzer's back to the division round. I just think that's simply how it is. I, I just think he's too good. He's going to step up in big games like he has always done. Um he's been so good for the Dodgers and I think he's going to carry him to a win. And I think that Dodgers bullpen is good enough. Uh, while I really do like that Cardinals offense, I just think in the end, the Dodgers are going to get plenty of pitching from Max Scherzer. The bullpen is good. Um, I think we're going to see the Dodgers move on to face the Giants in the division round. Uh, so the wild card games are done. So here is what I have here. I have Rays, Yankees, White, so well, White Sox, Astros already was there. And then we're going to have Giants, Dodgers, and then the Braves, Brewers. So let's get to it here we're past the wild card round let's start with the rays and the yankees i mean these two teams they just can't stay away from each other i mean hey they had five games last year in the division round the rays ended up winning it right there at the end um my, my mike brasso man i mean that's still i think still haunts yankee fans in their dreams uh but this rays team it, it, it's, they're going to be tough to beat. This Yankees offense, compared with the Rays offense, the Yankees, they have plenty of firepower. Plenty of firepower. Absolutely. But, again, it's a Forrest Gump box of chocolates offense. That is what this Yankees offense is. They could score 20 runs on you, or they could just... just just go home. You, you, you won't even see the offense. They'll go home in the fifth inning. Um, you don't know what you're going to get with this Yankees offense. With the Rays, I think... Uh, that offense, they are just so diverse. They got guys that can hit home runs. They got guys that can hit for average. They got guys that run the base as well. They are just tenacious out there with that offense. It's so good. Um, really like that Rays offense. I would give the edge to the Rays in terms of offense. Uh, very scary there with that lineup. Um, starting pitching, of course. The Yankees, I mean, by default, I mean, I think pretty much any team by default you're going to give them the edge of starting pitching. Not saying the Rays are going to be bad starting games, but I just think when you think of starting pitching, you think of, you know, the, the Garrett Coles and, you know, guys like that. But the Rays, they have guys that can come in and they can open games extremely well. You got Shane McClanahan, you got Rasmussen, and look out for Shane Baz. I think Shane Baz is, is a wild card kind of a guy you know, not a lot of exposure, but this guy has really good stuff. He can come in for a couple innings and really provide you something. Uh, I think in the end, the Rays, they're going to be able to hold their own. And especially with Garrett Cole pitching in the wild card game, you're not going to have Garrett Cole for a couple of games. So you're going to have to rely on those guys like a Corey Kluber. You're going to have to rely on a Nestor Cortez, a Jamison Tyone. Are you very comfortable with those guys in the first couple of games? I don't think so. Where these two teams are really, really really even is the bullpens these bullpens are phenomenal they're the two of the best bullpens in the game let's go take a look here i mean they really match up extremely well uh the yankees hey if you're in a close game with the yankees you can really rely on this bullpen to lock it down if they're up by one you got to feel confident if you're the yankees so chapman loisica green holmes Severino, I think, is going to be a big part of this. If they end up make, if they end up making it here to the division round, I think Severino is going to have a big role. He can come in for a few innings, kind of like Garrett Whitlock does on the Red Sox. So, I think Severino, that's an X factor kind of a guy for the Yankees. But for Tampa Bay, this bullpen as well is just extremely good. I mean, you're going to get Nick Anderson back, Conley is back as well. They got just so many guys all over this bullpen. They're the number one bullpen for a reason. They just have so many, not just guys that throw hard, but they also have these other guys as well, like someone like a Colin McHugh who doesn't throw very hard, but he's got all this movement. He locates. I mean, they got all these different looks. They got all these different looks. 
uh, these bullpens both match up really well. Where I think the Rays um, also are very good. If we take a look here at the Rays in terms of how they do in these situations, this is going to be a big part of this series, I think. Um, is late in games, especially with these bullpens. Which offense is going to be able to capitalize late in the games? Right now, Tampa Bay, for the season, they have a slight edge on the Yankees. But if you go back to August 1st, if you go back to August 1st, Tampa Bay, they have been on another level late in games. They have a 149 WRC plus in high leverage situations from the sixth inning on. Tampa Bay... They're going to be extremely tough to beat, especially with the bullpen that they have. I'm going with the Tampa Bay Rays in this series. I have them going to the championship series. I think, once again, another heartbreaker of a series for the Yankees. I see the Rays winning this in four games. Um, I think the Yankees, they'll have Garrett Cole. He can maybe get them a win when he comes in for a game three, if that's what it ends up being. I just think this Rays offense is just too good. I just, I I think the Yankees, they're outmatched. I, I just think the Yankees... They're going to lose this, and they're going to go. And I'm not saying this as, you know, you know, because, you know, I'm a Red Sox fan. I had the Yankees beating the Red Sox, so don't even uh, say that to me right there. Uh, but the the Yankees, they're going to go into this offseason. If this ends up being the, the what happens, Boone's gone. The whole coaching staff is gone. Uh, they're going to be very active in that free agent market. Um, yeah. It's, it's going to be a lot of changes for the Yankees, I believe. And this is what I think is going to end up happening. The Rays advance rather easily. The Yankees will win a game, but the Rays will move on to the championship series. Let's go on to the White Sox and the Astros. Um, you know, this is a fun series. I actually like this series a lot. I think both of these teams match up rather well. Uh, with the White Sox, where they have an edge, they have a couple of edges here. They got the starting pitching and they got the bullpen. So, I mean, sure, Carlos Rodon. I mean, what, what are you going to end up getting out of a Carlos Rodon? Not quite sure. But I think he's going to have some kind of a role. They are optimistic with him. So he's going to come in in, the, in this series some way, somehow, uh, in some kind of form. With the Astros, you know, hey, they, they got some guys here that can give you some innings with the starters. You know, you got Lance McCullers Jr. You got a Luis Garcia there. Um, you know, what's Zach Granke going to end up doing? You know, that's going to be interesting. I think he's a bit of a wild card in this series. Uh, even someone like a Fran Valdez as well. Um, I think the Astros, you know, hey, they can match up in terms of that starting pitching, especially with Carlos Rodon being a bit of a question mark. So I think the Astros White Sox, they're... Uh, they're, they're pretty, I say they're more even than you would think with the starting pitching. When you look at the offenses, uh, this, these two offenses are two of the best in the game. Houston definitely has the edge over the White Sox, but the, but the White Sox have a good offense as well. Um, you know, I think the White Sox, they can definitely hit. I, 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 there's no doubting that. They have a very good lineup. A guy's up and down this lineup. Um, so I'm not worried about the White Sox in terms of offense. I think their starters are going to be able to, to do a good job against the Astros offense. It's not going to be easy by any means, but I think the White Sox can hold their own uh, when it comes to uh, putting some runs on the board. Absolutely. And keeping up with that Astros offense as well. Uh, I think what is going to be the factor in this series is how are these bullpens going to perform? The White Sox right now, when you're looking at this White Sox bullpen, it's a shutdown. It's a shutdown bullpen. I understand Craig Kimbrell. He's had his struggles there with the White Sox. But you got other guys that you can turn to. Bummer, Tapera, Kopech, Crochet. I mean, there's a lot of arms in that Chicago White Sox bullpen. The Houston Astros bullpen worries me a little bit. I worry about the Houston Astros bullpen a little bit. Um, I do like these guys, but I, it's, I don't know. I, I want more, more shutdown kind of guys. Uh, when, you, when you're comparing it to the White Sox, the White Sox should be, especially with a good offense like that with Houston, um, what bullpen would you rather have to go against Houston's offense? Um, the White Sox bullpen, I think they're going to be up to the task. I think in the end, I think the White Sox, I think they're going to have enough. I think they're going to have enough. And I think that bullpen is going to be the big reason. They're going to keep up with the offense. They're going to keep up with uh, their offense, especially in terms of starting pitching. I think Lance Lynn is going to do well. Uh, I mean, you got Lucas Giolito as well. Dylan Cease has been underrated this year. I think the White Sox, in terms of matchups, maybe they're maybe not as talented as a team like the Astros, but I think they they match up really well. And they, 
they got a bullpen that can handle that offense. Uh, they have enough starting pitching. They have an offense that can keep up with their offense. I'm going with the White Sox to move on to the American League Championship Series against the Tampa Bay Rays. So this is what I have for the Championship Series in the American League. Let's move on to the National League. In the National League. Oh, man. You know what? I'm going to save the Giants and the Dodgers for last here. We're going to move on to the Braves and the Brewers first. Uh... Ooh, we're going to get some uh, some people in this chat. I know there's a lot of Dodgers fans in here, and I know there's a lot of Giants fans in here. Oh, it's it, get your popcorn ready because and pay attention to the comments for the Giants and the Dodgers when I talk to talk uh, talk about that. Oh, uh, I don't even, I don't even want to read the comments when I get to that series. But let's start off uh, with the Braves and the Brewers. Starting off with the Braves and the Brewers. Hey, this Brewers team. In the end, well, I, I kind of talked a bit negatively about the Brewers earlier on. I do like this Milwaukee Brewers team. I love the defense. I love the starting pitching. Definitely a bummer seeing um, Devin Williams out. I mean, that's tough to see with the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, you know, but I still think this Brewers team, they they got a solid, tight-knit group of guys. I mean, I love Craig Council. Uh, I love what they have there in Milwaukee. I do. Uh, with the Braves, I love what they have going on. D again, don't be, uh, don't be alarmed about the 88 wins. Uh, I wouldn't even look at the look at the wins there. The Braves are a completely different team in from what they were in the first half. They lost Ronald Acuna Jr., but they really made up for it in terms of other guys. Um, you know, Freddie Freeman, Austin Riley, really stepping up. Ozzy Albie's hitting for some power this year. Um, you know, I, I really like what the Braves have in terms of offense. That offense with the Atlanta Braves is by far better than the Brewers. So, but the Brewers have a good starting rotation that should be able uh, to keep up with that Atlanta Braves uh, offense. I mean, abs it, it should be able to not just keep up, but flourish. I mean, that's such a good starting staff for the Milwaukee Brewers. Um, where I, again, we kind of talked about this with the White Sox and the Astros. I think the bullpens are actually going to be uh, kind of the big factors here is which bullpen is going to really show up. You know, with losing Devin Williams, you know, I think that is a tough loss. Um, but the Braves, they, you know, the Braves bullpen kind of reminds me of the Astros. You got some good arms in there, but they're not, you know, a top tier bullpen by any means. I think in the end, which bullpen is going to step up enough and with the Braves, I also, I want to point out one thing with the Atlanta Braves. Let's actually go back to the Atlanta Braves here. Um, again, the Milwaukee Brewers definitely have the edge in terms of starting pitching. Absolutely. Um, but you know what? Hold on. That's not the right one. Let's go here. The, the Atlanta Braves, they can go, they can go with the starting pitching as well. I love me some Charlie Morton. Max Freed, he had a taste of playoff baseball last year. Even Ian Anderson did. This brave starting pitching staff, I think they're going to be up to the task uh, going up against guys, you know, like a Corbin Burns, like a Brandon Woodruff, like a Freddie Peralta, even guys like an Eric Hauer and an Adrian Hauser. I think uh, the Atlanta Braves, their starting pitching is pretty built well for the playoffs. I really like them in a short series. And you know what? I'm going with the Braves. I'm going with the Braves. I think the Braves actually match up well starting pitching wise. They have a really good offense that should uh, be enough to be able to get to Corbin Burns and Brandon Woodruff. I think the Braves are going to step up with that offense. And I think in the end, the Braves have the edge of the bullpen and because Devin Williams has had to go and break his hand. So, you know, again, I think some Brewers guys will step up. But in the end, I think... The Atlanta Braves, they're going to go back to the championship series for the second year in a row. I think everyone's going to be shocked because they're going to see those 88 wins. And they're going to be like, how the heck did the Atlanta Braves get here? But I love that the Atlanta Braves really came together this year. It almost felt like they came together uh, more when Ronald Acuna Jr. went down. Sound FX with a $10 super chat just in time. Braves versus Brewers, in my opinion, will be a dogfight. I agree. Braves are the underdogs in this entire playoffs, but I believe that will make them the most dangerous team to chop on, win it for Hammer and Hank. Hey, hey, that's a pretty solid, solid post, Sound FX. Thank you for the $10 super chat, my friend. Uh, I'm with you. I think the Braves are going to move on here to the championship series. I like me some Milwaukee Brewers, but I think for a playoff series, I think the Braves are just built a little bit better. 
uh, for the championship series. Now, everyone, please get your popcorn ready. We're going to talk about the best series possibly in this entire postseason. We got the Giants. We got the Dodgers. Uh, I mean, come on here. Come on. This is going to be a heck of a series. These two teams are not, they don't just have the two best records in all of Major League Baseball, but they're so close. They are so evenly matched. When we look at the offense, I mean, they are neck and neck with the offense. They both have really good starting staffs. Dodgers in first, Giants in fifth. I mean, just phenomenal starting pitching from both teams. And the bullpens. The bullpens have both been very good this year. Dodgers in fifth, Giants in sixth. Um, they're so evenly matched. <sighs> man, oh man. I mean, I know who I'm picking. I know who I'm picking, but how do I present this to where... Uh, to, uh, to where uh, uh, one half of the fan base here is going to just explode on me. How do I present this? Um, well, here we go. Let's just get into it. Uh, both offenses are evenly matched. I mean, they're very good. Very good. And they both lost two of their best hitters in a Max Muncy and a Brandon Belt. So uh, they're still pretty even when it comes to the offense. I think the Dodgers are a little deeper in terms of offenses. When you look at the lineups, I think... The Dodgers are maybe a, a, a smidge deeper um, when it comes to the extension of a lineup. With the starting pitching, I think, you know, when you think of the Dodgers, you think of, you know, Max Scherzer, a Julio Urias, a Walker Bueller. Um, but hey, the Giants can hold their own as well. They can hold their own. So don't, you know, just completely discredit um, the San Francisco Giants starting rotation. I mean, they've been phenomenal all year. And I think... Having to throw Max Scherzer in that wild card game, that that could end up, you know, being something there. That could end up being a bit of a factor. They got four guys here who can give you a chance to win. Kevin Gosman's been great this year. Logan Webb has been phenomenal. Desclafani, Alex Wood, those are guys that can really give you some good starts. Um, and then Johnny Cueto can go help out in that bullpen. A veteran presence in that bullpen, I think, is going to be. Um, I think Johnny Cueto, he has X-Factor written all over him. I think he can end up being really good, especially if someone like an Alex Wood falters a little bit or a Desclafani or, you know, someone like a Logan Webb. Logan Webb is a younger guy. How is he going to be in the postseason? I think, you know, Logan Webb's been great this year, but you're on the big stage here. Logan Webb, can you step up? I think Logan Webb's going to be fine. Uh, this guy runs on adrenaline. I think Logan Webb... Uh, is a guy for the postseason. He's built for the postseason. So I'm not really too worried about Logan Webb. But, um, hey, you got to navigate through a tough Dodgers lineup at the end of the day. But I think Johnny Cueto could be a guy that can give you a, a very valuable three innings out of that bullpen. Um, look out for Johnny Cueto in this, in this postseason. Where these two teams are also even are the bullpens. Uh, the Dodgers slightly better with the bullpen in terms of the numbers. Giants just right behind them. I like both of these bullpens. I think the Dodgers, you might have a few more names here that are a little more recognizable. Uh, where are we at here? So, I mean, again, Kenley Jansen, Blake Trainin, you know, Joe Kelly. I mean, Joe Kelly is a name to me because I will just love Joe Kelly until the end of time. Um, but you got a really solid group of guys here. I wonder about Kenley Jansen. I think that's pretty fair to say because at the end of the day, Kenley Jansen, he has just had his moments and not good ones in the postseason. How is he going to end up doing? I think Dave Roberts is going to have a short leash on him. Um, and that's just my opinion. I think he's going to give him a chance. But at the end of the day, I mean, I think, you know, if you're if you're in a tight series with the Giants, you're not going to, you're not going to, you know, you know, you're not going to try and push it. Blake Trainin, that's a solid guy. I mean, Trainin came in. Uh, he ended up taking over basically the closer duties after Kenley Jansen in the World Series last year. And he was good. So I really like this staff. Um, with the bullpen here. You know what? With the Giants, I like it too. They got a lot of different options here. A lot of guys stepping up. You know, I like me a guy like a Dominic Leone. He's been very good this year. You got three different guys that you can go to at the end of the game. You know, Jake McGee, most likely the guy that you turn to, but you got a guy like uh, Camilo Duvall who's really stepped up. You know, Tyler Rogers is a guy you can turn to as well. They got some pretty solid guys here in middle relief. Tony Watson should come back eventually. I like this Giants, uh, the bullpen. It's very evenly matched. Here is the difference. Oh, I'm ready for the I'm ready for the, the, the certain fan base that is going to explode on me any moment now. You want to know what the difference is going to be in this series? 
They're even with the offense. They're even with the starting pitching. They're even with the bullpen. Here is the difference. Uh, if you can please direct your attention to the top of this board here. San Francisco, since August 1st, they rank number one overall in terms of high leverage situations from the sixth inning on. They are phenomenal late in games with that offense. Look at the Dodgers all the way down 22nd. The Giants will move on past the Dodgers. I'm going with the San Francisco Giants to move on to the National League Championship Series. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a close series. It'll probably come down to the last pitch in game five, but the Giants will find a way to win. And you know why? Because they're good late in games. And that's just only from August 1st. Let's go to the beginning of the year. The Giants have, have been second best overall in these pressure cooker situations in these high leverage situations late in games the Giants are second overall while the Dodgers are 19th the Giants come up more clutch than the, than the Dodgers do that's going to be big that's going to be big in terms of postseason action the Giants they get it done when it matters most I think Brandon Bell that's that's a big loss but the Giants lost Max or but the Dodgers lost Max Muncy so the Giants are going to get it done here's my final four Tampa Bay, White Sox, Giants, Braves. Who would have expected, you know, this championship series? Well, maybe the Braves. I think maybe some people picked the Braves before the season. But considering how they were playing, you know, beginning, you know, first half of the year, I think a lot of people were like, oh, the Bra I don't know about this Braves team. But in my predictions, they make it all the way back here. So let's go to the American League Championship Series. The Rays and the White Sox. I love this matchup because it's like new school versus old school. Kevin Cash, Tony La Russa. I mean, what a matchup that is. I mean, that's just phenomenal. That's just great storytelling already. Um, but the Tampa Bay Rays and the White Sox, this is going to be a very good series if this ends up happening. Taking a look here, they're both very good in terms of offense. Tampa Bay, third overall. The White Sox, fourth overall. The White Sox, I mean, Again, Tampa Bay, not really, really much starting pitching. That, that's not really their game. Um, but the White Sox, they have solid options that they can turn to, uh, to in games one through four here. You know, who knows what ends up happening with the Carlos Rodon. I think Carlos Rodon, if this ends up being the situation, I think he's going to end up coming back and he'll get a start. How deep can he go into a game? Not quite sure about that. But... Um, in the end, the White Sox, they got some solid arms that they can turn to in a series like this. But Tampa Bay, they got some solid guys that can open some games. Um, and they're definitely going to pick their matchups very well, uh, especially against a team like the White Sox. You know, Tampa Bay, they're going to go with those analytics and they're going to pick the best matchups possible. So um, the bullpens, in the end, I mean, these bullpens... They, these are the two best bullpens in Major League Baseball this year. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, Tampa Bay, number one, Chicago, number two. I mean, they're just power arms all over these bullpens. Tampa Bay, if we go take a look here, um, Tampa Bay overall. Actually, let's go take a look at the velocities of these guys. Look at all the velocity you got coming out of this Tampa Bay bullpen in, in this page right here. You got 97 from Kittrick. You got Fairbanks going 98 on average. Shagwa going 96. You know, Nick Anderson, he's going to pump it up a little bit. I feel like he threw harder last year, um, but whatever. He's actually, well, he's had his problems this year, you know, injury wise as well. So, you know, got Adam Conley, you know, pumping gas as well. But then you got a guy like a Colin McHugh. He's definitely going to give you a, a different look out there. They got all these different options. Whereas the White Sox, also a ton of power arms. That's kind of their game. They really go with those power arms. Liam Hendricks at Craig Kimbrell. Again, he has struggled a little bit with the White Sox, but I think he's going to have some kind of a role. They'll pick and choose where to put him in games. You know, Michael Kopech at Garrett Crochet. Power arms all over the place. And then you got guys like Bummer and Tapera as well. Um, so phenomenal bullpens on both sides. Where this matchup will be decided where this matchup will be decided. Let's go to those late inning, high leverage situations. Everyone, ladies and gentlemen, take a look. Tampa Bay comes in fifth for the year. The White Sox come in 26. Tampa Bay's offense is so diverse. They are phenomenal. And they just, and they don't just do it consistently on a day-to-day -day basis. They come through for you 
in the end, Tampa Bay, they make it to the World Series. That's what I think. Uh, they're going to get by that White Sox team. They'll figure it out in the end. They're going to pick their matchups. It's a very good organization. They're going to find a way to win this series. I think Tampa Bay wins this series in six games. They move on to the World Series. Let's go to the National League Championship Series. We got the Giants. We got the Braves. I actually think this is a pretty fun series when you look at it. Uh, in the end, I think the Giants and the Dodgers, that is the most star-studded series here. But I think this Giants Brave series could be really fun as well. Um, I really like the matchups in terms of starting pitching. I would love to see a Kevin Gosman versus Charlie Morton in game one. I think it's just a fun matchup, you know? And then you got, you know, someone like a Max Freed against a Logan Webb. I think that's very fun. I mean, that's very fun starting pitching matchups. So I really like the starting pitching matchups. I actually think that's more even than you would think. I know the Giants are definitely a bit ahead of the Braves in terms of starting pitching rankings. But I think the Braves, they're going to be able to hold their own in the postseason when it comes to starting pitching. Both offenses are very good. Both offenses are very good. If you take a look here. Oh, I was looking at the offense a second ago. Starting pitching, Giants were fifth. Atlanta was 12th. Uh, offenses, Giants were fifth. Atlanta was 11th. So, but Atlanta really turned it on in the second half. Uh, very good offense in the second half. And the Giants, they've been very steady all year. Very good. So, uh, I think those offenses are closer than you would think as well. Uh, the Atlanta Braves, they got a ton of bats there, up and down. Freeman, I mean, Austin Riley, I mean, Ozzy Albies. I mean, you got so many bats there, um, tons of bats. And then the Giants, all, just very consistent all year. And again, they're very good late in games. They come up big for you when it matters most. You know, guys like Lamont Wade Jr. Um, I mean, come on. I mean, I, I also just love Darren Ruff. You know, I just like that he can go into games and he can just, he can just, you know, hey, he can do what he does, what he's got to do. Um, I really like both offenses as well. I think the difference here, I think the difference in this series, I think it's going to come down to the bullpens. And in the end, in the end, the Giants just have a better bullpen uh, than the Atlanta Braves overall. Atlanta ranked 13th overall. The Giants ranked 6th. Uh, the Giants bullpen, they come up big late in games. They got a ton of different looks for you and the Giants they perform well late in games and I think that's going to be a mismatch I think in the end the Giants make it to the World Series and in the end we're going to have the best team from the American League and the best team record wise from the National League um, you know both both teams record wise were, were the best in their leagues Tampa Bay and the San Francisco Giants Tampa Bay and the San Francisco Giants so what a fun series this is. It's almost like you got the Giants who were so good in the early 2010s, you know, winning three World Series there. And then you got the Rays, this young up and coming organization that they're, they just want that championship. They, they got all these just young guys that are just ready to win. Um, and they just got a, such a solid future as well. This is going to be an extremely fun World Series if this ends up being what it ends up being. Um, I actually, you know, for some of you, this actually might end up looking kind of boring considering they're, you know, the two number one seeds. But hey, World Series odds right now, they got the Dodgers out in front. While the Dodgers are the four seed, um, the Dodgers right now are the World Series favorites this year. Fangraphs gives them the highest percent chance. So, you know, it is, you know, one versus one, but I think in the end, it's not going to be easy for the Giants to get here. The Rays, they're going to have their bumps as well. So um, while it is a one versus one, I wouldn't look at it in terms of, you know, like it's just like the easy World Series to pick just because of their seeding. Like I said, Dodgers are the World Series favorites right now. Uh, the Rays aren't even close. When you look at Fangrass, they don't even get, really give the Rays a chance. They're second to last, 7.1% chance. They don't give the Giants a chance either, 8.7% chance. So, um, hey, I know this might look like a, uh, like a uh, what's the word, shock, I guess, is, you know, whatever. But this is, uh, according to World Series odds and Fangrass odds, this is... Uh, not the World Series that I think a lot of people are going to end up picking. Um, so I can see a lot of people going with the Dodgers. So I can see a lot of people in the American League, you know, going with the White Sox or the Astros. I could see that as well. So for me, 
I'm going with the Rays and the Giants, and I think this is going to be an extremely fun World Series. Both very good offenses. If I would have to lean one way, I would give the edge to the Rays in terms of offense. I just love how dynamic that offense is. They got all these different options in that lineup. I like me, the San Francisco Giants. I like how clutch they are. Um, but Tampa Bay, up and down in that lineup, they just got so many different kinds of bats. They got power. They got speed. They got average. Um, the Giants, very good as well. Tampa Bay, for me, though, gets a slight, uh, slight edge. For the starting pitching, the Giants, that's where they get the edge. Uh, the Giants, I mean, hey, Tampa Bay, that's not really, you know, their game uh, when it comes to, you know, guys that can go, you know, multiple guys that can go, you know, six, seven innings. Uh, but the San Francisco Giants, they just have a solid four guys that they can go with. A Gosman, a Webb, a Desclafani, a Alex Wood. So I really like the options that the Giants can turn to, and they feel comfortable with those guys. That's what I like. With Tampa Bay, they have to kind of pick and choose. They have to really uh, do their homework on who they're going to open games with. Uh, they both also have very good bullpens. Very good bullpens for both. Again, we've looked at these bullpens up and down. You got a lot of a lot of different looks out of the Tampa Bay bullpen. Guys that can throw hard, guys that can rely on movement, guys that can rely on location. Um, and then with the Giants, you got different looks as well. Uh, you got you know all these different guys that you can turn to to close games. Um, you know, guys that can throw hard, guys that can you know rely on movement and so on. Um, in the end, I think these two teams are very even. Um, you know, very close, very close. They both have slight edges in different ways. In the end, in the end, I think, while the, the Giants here, and this is also one thing I want to take note of here, the Giants, very, like I've mentioned a couple of times here, very clutch this year, and that's also where, you know, they're very even as well. Tampa Bay, they're very clutch too. In the end, in the end, I think in seven games, I'm going, drum roll please, with the Rays to win their first World Series. They're hungry. They learned a lesson last year in the World Series against the Dodgers. I, I think they're ready to win. I think they're ready to do it. I think they're going to plug in the right guys in the right moments. They're going to win this series. And th that offense is so good. That bullpen is so good. They are Ju they are just as clutch of a team as the Giants are. They got all these different options all over the place. I think in the end, the Tampa Bay Rays, they figure this out and they win their first World Series in franchise history. The lowest payroll ever to win the World Series. It's going to be an extremely close, extremely close World Series. The Giants, I think in the end, I think the Tampa Bay Rays, they're just hungry. They're, they, they, they were so close against the Dodgers last year. And I think the Rays find a way to win the World Series. So in the end, they are my World Series winners. So that is all I have for tonight, everyone. I appreciate you all coming out for my predictions, for the preview. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Do you think my predictions are looking pretty good? Do you think I'm an absolute idiot? Let me know what you think down below in the comments. But uh, that is all I have for right now. Uh, everyone, come on out tomorrow night. We're going to be watching the Red Sox, Yankees. Come out for the wild card game with the Cardinals and the Dodgers in a couple of nights. I'm going to be doing a lot of streaming in the next month. Uh, I'm very excited for this next month. I know you're all very excited. Um, everyone, thank you for coming out tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, again, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Who do you have winning the World Series this year? Uh, but everyone, have yourself a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow night for the Red Sox and the Yankees. Everyone, uh, bon voyage, and have a good night.